It is Wednesday evening on this 8th of October across Tokyo, Japan, and this is a quick update on Super Typhoon Vongfong. We're going to begin with some of the latest high-resolution satellite imagery that has become available thanks to NASA. You can see that this is easily the most impressive storm of 2014, not just for the Western Pacific, but also just worldwide. We haven't had a typhoon this strong since Super Typhoon Haiyan struck the Philippines late last year in November. And as we take a more zoomed in look, you can see that this is a well-defined eye. You even see some mesovortices swirling around within the eye itself, which is a very common occurrence for typhoons that become this strong. Now the following is a water vapor animation, and the water vapor can really tell us why Vong Fong has intensified so rapidly over the last 24 to 36 hours. But beginning 72 hours ago, or three days ago, you can see that Vong Fong was really struggling. It wasn't much more than a minimal typhoon trying to hold on a typhoon status. It was just barely above being no more than a tropical storm. And that is thanks to a lot of east to east northeast wind shear and dry air being penetrated into the storm in the northeast quadrant. What we had was a very strong mid to upper level ridge inducing a lot of that easterly shear in dry air entrainment. However, over the last two days, Typhoon Vongfong has continued to move toward the west northwest away from the negative influence of this ridge and it's moving into an increasingly moist environment and it moved away from that east northeast to northeast wind shear and you can see the end result rapid intensification into what is now a super typhoon. Now it is likely that Vongfong has maxed in intensity. It's very rare for typhoons to become ever stronger than what it currently is. It's nearly impossible to have anything higher than 155 to 160 knots in terms of sustained one minute winds. And as Vong Fong continues to move toward the north, it's going to start moving into another area with a little bit more in the way of dry air. And also the southwest upper level winds are a little stronger in this area. So we are looking at weakening as Vong Fong approaches Okinawa and the southern islands of Japan. But the question is just how much in the way of weakening are we truly going to see until this system dramatically weakens within the next few days. Obviously interest across the southern islands of Japan should still be bracing for at least moderate to potentially even strong typhoon impacts. As we begin to take a more zoomed in look at Fong Fong once again, you can see that the storm is closely following the most recent forecast track from the U.S. Joint Typhoon Warning Center. The storm had been moving more so toward the west and west-northwest over the past day or so. But the much anticipated gradual bend to the northwest and eventually the north is underway. You see the storm is starting to move more toward the northwest and it is closely following the latest JTWC forecast track. As the sun begins to set late this afternoon and early this evening out across the western Pacific, you can see on the most recent visible satellite animation that we are beginning to see the sunset shadow out across the western portion of the eye and that is because the convection and thunderstorm development within the western eye wall is so high that it is casting a shadow within at least half of the center of Vong Fong and you also see a bit of the stadium effect which is a sign that the convection around the eye wall once again is moving outward and expanding outward away from the eye and this is again something that you only see with fairly strong typhoons as we look at the enhanced infrared you can see that some of the darker infrared colors here still notes that convection and thunderstorms are very strong and we haven't really seen too much of a reduction. The convection was a little stronger at this point about 12 to 18 hours ago and it looked like Vong Fong was going to begin a weakening trend and Vong Fong may in fact be a little bit weaker than it was earlier today. But if so, it isn't by much. The overall symmetry is still there and of course you still see that well-defined eye and we still see a clear max in the dry air located within the center of the eye. Again, just another signature that we are dealing with a near classic textbook type typhoon at this hour. Looking ahead with the latest forecast from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, we see that again the initial intensity is 145 knots. They do believe that the intensity could increase once again and peak near 150 knots. But thereafter, as the center of circulation moves closer toward Okinawa and the southernmost islands of Japan, we do see substantial weakening. By the time we go into the 12th, it looks like the winds are forecast to decrease to 85 knots sustained, which is still a minimal to moderate typhoon. But the question is, will we really see that much in the way of substantial weakening? 
I would always suggest that you should prepare for at least one category higher in the event that the intensity forecast does not pan out exactly as anticipated. Again, the intensity is a little bit more difficult to nail down than the track forecast. And even with that said, look at how much the margin of error is with regards to the track itself. The JTWC track error can be as far west as almost the east coast of China and almost as far east as to implying that it would make a northeast turn away from Japan altogether within 72 hours. Now with that said, neither one of those two, two solutions are overly likely. What's a lot more probable is that we see a track somewhere down the middle, which is of course what the JTWC is going with. Uh, it is still too early to determine exactly which islands have the best bet of seeing the eye wall or the strongest winds associated with Typhoon Vongfong. At this hour, it still looks like the best bet would be that the center of circulation is going to pass just to the east and eventually the north of Naha. But on the flip side of that statement, there is still plenty enough model guidance that would imply that a direct landfall still cannot be totally ruled out. This is the American GFS Ensemble model guidance, and you can see by the vast majority of these model plots that they show much more of a bend toward the northwest over the next three to four days as the mid-level ridge that we saw on the water vapor imagery to the east of Vongfong temporarily at least builds back in towards southeast Japan, which would help to induce more of that northwest motion until the system finally gets caught up by southwest winds and recurves towards Tokyo. Again, as we outlined in the videos earlier today and yesterday, once the storm moves closer toward Tokyo, we're going to be looking at a substantially weaker storm as it moves into cooler water temperatures, increasingly dry air, and southwest vertical wind shear. Again, the main concern is going to be for some of these smaller southernmost islands near the Kyushu Islands and Okinawa, and we'll just have to see what the intensity is over the next couple of days as the storm moves closer. Just for comparison purposes, we looked at the GFS Ensemble model plots, but here is a look at the European model's surface forecast representation of the winds. And you can see as we get into Friday evening, even though the center of circulation is still well to the southeast of Naha, we're still going to be dealing with at least moderate tropical storm force winds by this time. And this is partly in response to the pressure gradient between the extremely low pressures within the eye of the storm and higher pressures outside of the typhoon. And as we advance the forecast more so into Saturday, we can see that the European is showing a more easterly solution compared to its American GFS model counterpart, and this would certainly be good news for the southern islands of Okinawa. But even the easternmost European model is still showing a bit of a bend to the north-northwest, so areas near and immediately south of Kagoshima can still anticipate at least minimal typhoon conditions with sustained winds exceeding 65 knots and likely more so in the way of 70 to 80 or potentially even 90 plus knots and that is what you need to be ready for in the event that the storm does not rapidly weaken beyond this intensity. This European model frame just for anyone keeping track is more so now for Sunday night into Monday morning so this is going to be a prolonged event as Typhoon Vongfong is a rather large system so even as the center bypasses you you're still going to be dealing with rather persistent tropical storm force winds well beyond a 24-hour period and as we see as we advance into the day on Monday the center of circulation starts to move more so toward the northeast and along the eastern coast of the Japanese mainland. So for anyone tuning in in southern Japan now is the time to make those preparations you already are dealing with moderately strong northeast winds due to the pressure gradient but the winds are only going to increase as we head into tomorrow. So the sooner you can get your final preparations done, the better off you're going to be before conditions rapidly deteriorate even more so. So thank you for tuning in. Stay safe out there and follow 28storms.com typhoon for continuous updates.